Hi, I'm Austin Alexander, and I'm an undergraduate researcher at Oregon State University. And today I want to talk with you about uh, genetic code expansion. But first, let's talk about proteins. A protein is basically a long chain of amino acids that folds upon itself into a 3D jumbled up glob. This glob is constantly rearranging its shape and adopting thousands of different conformations. Because proteins are so good at morphing, they can carry out many different functions in our bodies, like sticking together to form your hair and nails, or binding to molecules to transport materials around your cells. If we were to untangle a protein and stretch out that chain of amino acids straight, we would see that there are only 20 different amino acids. Translation is the process of these 20 amino acids being strung together in a specific order to make a chain that folds up into a protein. Basically, there are a bunch of amino acids floating freely around a cell, and each of the 20 amino acids has a corresponding synthetase and tRNA also in the cell. The synthetase, amino acid, and tRNA all come together, and the amino acid is chemically loaded onto the tRNA by the synthetase. Next, the loaded tRNA is transported to the ribosome, where the amino acid is unloaded and then added to the chain of other amino acids, making a protein. So, what if we made a protein with totally new building blocks, called non-canonical amino acids? It's tricky, because remember how each amino acid has a corresponding synthetase and tRNA? Well, our new non-canonical amino acid wouldn't have those, so it literally could not be brought to the ribosome and added to the chain. Unless, by some miracle, we found an organism that had a 21st amino acid, thus a 21st corresponding synthetase and tRNA. Methanosarcina baccari, a species of archaea, does have a 21st amino acid called pyrolysine. Scientists were able to isolate the pyrolysine synthetase tRNA pair and put them into E. coli. As it turns out, the pyrolysine synthetase tRNA pair isn't too picky about what amino acid it binds to because scientists working in genetic code expansion started making new non-canonical amino acids that looked kind of like pyrolysine, and these non-canonical amino acids were transported to the ribosome and incorporated into the amino acid chain quite well, forming unnatural proteins in E. coli cells. We also began making different mutations in the pyrolysine synthetase so that it could bind to many different types of non-canonical amino acids. You are probably wondering, what is the point of making proteins with weird unnatural amino acids? Non-canonical amino acids can be used as tools to help scientists solve problems in a variety of fields. Protein surfaces, drug delivery, cell imaging, you name it. Genetic code expansion gives us the ability to further understand biological processes and make advances in medicine. And for the most part, your imagination is the only limitation to what you can do with genetic code expansion.